everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Rickety Games. I'm Cindy, and today we are here with the finale episode of Alone in the Dark. This is the ending of chapter four and all of chapter five and the ending of the entire game, you guys. This is pretty insane. It gets wild. We get to figure out the rest of what's going on with the Dark Man, with Jeremy's condition, the madness that's creeping into Edward Carnby. We're getting locked out of everything for some reason, but we will not be stopped by the locked doors. We've got this like festival of St. John upon us and things are starting to come to a fruition. So let's get into it. Conby had run their car off the bridge. He pulled Grace out of the sinking car, but left her father to drown. He could have saved him. There was time. He just chose not to. Mm. Instead, he took Grace back to New Orleans and collected his paycheck. Ooh. Yeah. And he didn't realize that her mother was the bad one and that he was actually doing the right thing, her father. So yeah, this is the, the darkness. It's her, the car, the tree, the bridge, the darkness, the boat that saved her and not her father, and then Dis, uh, Dercetto, I believe. One of these, probably, right? Where she got taken to. Oh yeah, that's the square. And then Dercetto. Oh man. We're full up on Jack in the Boxes, why? Ugh. No thank you. So Grace's room is good. Anything else in Jeremy's room? It still says that we're missing something in here. So I kind of wonder if something will appear in here. So far, not so much. And it says there's something still in Perosi's room. Maybe it's the puzzle? So we technically didn't solve it the way they want. Oh, it's locked now. Fuck. Can't go down there anymore. Oh my god, it's locked again. So rude. And we can't do anything in Lottie's room yet because we lost the damn key. And for some reason, that's blocked too. Is this still? I don't want to run into the order of these right now. Ah. I'm not sure I can trust them. Well, okay, so this is a complete dead end over on this side. Worth a look, though. <laughs> so our objective says we need to leave an offering with the whispering tree. Why would we want to do that? Why do we want to appease it? But maybe offering something to the tree, maybe it'll leave us alone? These white flowers weren't here before, were they? I'm kind of worried about doing this though. I might lock us out of the other things. Your soul. The word is, I'll remember. You should have it. What did he drop? His license? She will call on you and it's time. Do not ignore her. Oh! That immediately wants to make me ignore it. But we won't. What the heck did we leave? Hmm, huh. maybe the attic. We're doing pretty good on rooms. I mean, it looks like we're completely locked out of the basement, though. So we can't get whatever was left in the cellar. Let's go up to the attic. Maybe there'll be more stuff there. All the way up. Like maybe more of Jeremy's. And we're back here. Oh, perfect time to have a look around this place. Statuette is up here, cause like we ne is that a noose? Oh fuck. Um, cause we never actually got to look up in here. Can't interact with that yet. I'm pushing the buttons. Okay. Tessellated shark. 
prisoner of ice and we get forbidden knowledge. Wasn't there a secret thing in the attic uh, that um, that we could find? Is it this by any chance? Like we unlocked something in the stuff that was forbidden knowledge. Maybe it's this? Is that? <gasps> it's the other stuff! Oh, we can put it six, one. Oh, we need the third number. This looks like the base for sure. And the other side. Can we rotate it at all? Ooh, six, four, one. Doesn't tell us what order. But four looks like the biggest piece. So let's just try this. Then maybe swap these. For one, <gasps> the noose. That's not good. Ooh, is that the other world underneath? It is. Ooh, what is this? this is where Jeremy's hiding, right? Hello, is anyone there? Yeah, a boat in the on the swamp. Jeremy, I need help. Wait. Can you hear me? I'm stuck in the mud and the fire is taking me. Jeremy, where are you? The motor is dead. I can't do anything more. Hang on, Jeremy. I'll figure something out. I'll get the boat running. Fuck yeah. We found him. This is what the, they said in the... The, um, the medical area that, that they said that he was on a boat in the bayou. Oh, fuck yeah. This is cool. Like, we're like following and it's crazy. Oh, was that something? No. Okay, let's go. We're following along. It really feels uh, well, well paced like a detective. Like, I feel like I'm able to put the pieces together just like Edward Carnby is doing. I appreciate it. Whoa! What the fuck? Oh yeah, one hit took it out. Nope. Whoa there. Okay, one hit did not take it out. What the fuck? Right, that did it. Holy smokes. That was rude. As I was trying to get my items. We're running out of shotgun shells, but we just got some. Alright. We use the pistol a little bit. The boat's wedged itself right into the bayou. If I get the motor started, I could try reversing back into the river. Mm. Good to know. Barred, and then blocked. Okay. Let's make it, and then we can go down and we can go up. This is creepy. This is a cool environment, though. The dark. The the game is starting to get like a uh, darker and more sinister. bell? Can I ring it? Did I call everything? 
What is that? That's a way to drop in. Okay, let me check out the rest of this up here, though. Like this side. Oh. Yeah, it seems like it'll be something later. Thank goodness it didn't fall underneath my feet. Opens it up. Bard. Open. The boat is creaking something bad. Ooh. Oh, a bunch of hatchets right there. Okay, gotcha. So we got unlimited hatchet supply over there. Alright, and then it doesn't look like there's anything else on this side. So let's go... It's like a captain's office or something up ahead. Did I do it? Yeah, I did it. <sighs> Nothing in the safe. Alright. And then we're good in here, I think. Alright, let's go downstairs now. I wonder what those things are. They're really weird looking. Definitely very, uh, Lovecraftian. He loved, like, weird bugs and shit. That's where we came from, so let's go down, down. All the way down. Open sesame! Oh, ho, 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 ho. Jeremy. Where are you? Compass? Broken compass. Vagabonds. Ooh. We need, looks like a book, and that's the last one. For that one. Nothing in there. Sadness. Really, all there is? We can't like vault over. Huh. Okay, so we gotta get to the other side. Looks pretty weak. I just need something to break it. Ah. That's why we have the infinite axe supply. So like, yeah, we're back upstairs on the top, and then we came down here. Because that makes sense. I'm trying to get around to the back. Oh, no, 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 no. Get back down there. My eyeballs again. Really get a good view of uh, Edward Carnby's eyeballs. It's pretty gross. Happened in the first episode too, it was really funny. Oh yeah. This is an engine room. This definitely needs fuel. Fuel, okay. That's nothing. What is that? Fuel? Empty gas can. Oh bitch. Where do we need to fill it up then? Turns off the steam. Phew. 
fuel. Nice. Well, that was easier than I thought. It's not like amnesia where we had to go run off into the distance somewhere. Alright, chug a chug. And Jeremy couldn't do this. Why? Yeah, let there be machine! Oh, for the love of God. Okay, there we go. Stuck in the safe. Alright. Nice. Alright, let's get out of here. No? Oh, we shouldn't throw something in here. Oh, there's our hole in the wall. Didn't even notice. Okay, not gonna do that twice again. I like that the sticks sound like a metal ladder. So I'm coming back the way that I came. There we go. So now that that's running, we need to find, uh... Oh, shit. What the fuck? Oh, it's getting weird now. See you. We need to go down. There. Whoa! Wasn't there a drop down? Oh, Ow! Fuck! Get fucked! This music is wild. I like it. Yeah, that's right. This drop down. I didn't do it before. I was exploring. of Ponchre Train. Ponchre Train. He got so quiet without the music. The artist spent a lot of time boating on the vast lake Pontra Train. Poetry, painting, photography. Everything seemed to become better by the shimmering water and the opalescent sky. One night, as the sailors returned to Darseto, they found a masquerade ball taking place. It must have been Perosi and Nora who invited their friends from the theater. The sailors quickly fashioned masks out of plaster of Paris and joined the festivities. They enjoyed themselves for hours before realizing time was not passing, nor could they find their friends. As they began to worry, they demanded that the guests unmasked, but they could not, because they were not wearing any masks. Ooh, that's creepy. That's awesome. It's fucked. Absolutely fucked, though. Here they come trying to break in. Alright, let's get out of here. How could I be full of a hatchet if I don't have one? I can't use my sledgehammer currently, but it says I have one. I'm all out of bullets. Fuck. Damn. I'm running into all the glitches. Could it be this that we need? Oh, it is. I wish I didn't known that before. I thought we were trying to get the big boat. Ooh, maybe we are. This is just a means to get to... Ooh, 
It is. It's the other side of the engine room that we couldn't get to. Well, that's nice. I'm out of fucking bullets, though. We'll manage. We find bullets. But damn. I also wish I could get my sledgehammer out because I can't use it! Unfortunate. Go down! Woo! He's gonna come with me. Ah! Okay, okay, come on. Come on now! He's so annoying with his bullet shit. Oh! We get him? We got him. Hell yeah. <laughs> The lucky bullets! That was so rough. Oh, If you run too much, he won't load his gun because he's busy running, which I get, but Jesus. I sure wish I could use my melee weapon that apparently I have. Whoa, whoa. Thirty years ago, Frederick needed me to die. You're not making any sense, Jeremy. Find hey. your focus. Magic bullets. Hey! I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. Hey! I escaped hey. my doom. My destiny. I did. Find hey. your focus. Hey, I'm right here. What the hell is going on? Oh, everything is wrong. Nothing is in place. Hey. I'm right here! Calm down, Mr. Conby. What do you want? Did... Were you... Were you not talking to Jeremy right now? I haven't seen Jeremy all day. Are you all right, Detective? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. we're fine. No, actually, actually, I don't... I don't think so. Well, maybe. I'm gonna go... Look for Jeremy. Good. Let me know if you find him. <laughs> Whoa, that was fucked. I think that was... That was Jeremy's self-deceit? A steamboat stuck in the mud? I'm not gonna pretend I understand any of that. What a bunch of psychoanalytic nonsense. <laughs> I think that was a reference to the first game, though, because wasn't the very, very first Alone in the Dark, it was about investigating the suicide of Jeremy Hartwood? Because there was something suspicious about it? Hey, visit. Oh, we do get to go to his apartment. Dr. Gray visit in his apartment. Ooh. Ooh. It's all back to normal. Damn, I look absolutely fucked. How come I can't use... I don't have any melee weapons. I'm out of everything, so that's not good. <laughs> I got one shotgun shell, so that's, uh, that's, a, that's a thing. Damn, good lord. So it should be this way, I think. Of course. Is 
So this way? Why is everything miscolored? Oh good. Is the is the dark man here? Because everything's like fucked up. Do not disturb. A prisoner of ice. So we need what a necklace. Detective, am I glad to see you? Lock the door, will you? I don't think Doctor Gray would appreciate us sniffing around. What's going on here? This feels so strange. Oh, whoa. This is different. There's a book missing. Fall's book. It's hollow. Before we put it back, is there anything? Have you found anything? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've seen some things okay let me know if there is anything you want to talk about uh, everything your uncle is insane and I'm insane and there's a lot of things going on you don't find this place strange there's a pact Dorsetto is certainly one of the stranger places I've been to he cheated death we don't none of these things we want to mention is that it no we can talk to her this room feels too real, hyper real, more than anything I've ever experienced. It's a cool angle. Um, okay. I don't see what you mean. Forget it. I gotta get back to breaking the contract. Yeah, that's what I was doing. She's like, what contract? My contract? <laughs> I'm paying you $150 for it? <laughs> Nothing else this way. The fixed camera angle is cool. What is this in the floor? <gasps> a toy talisman. Ooh. Oh, the world's a stage. So we need just the box thing now. Mouse is killing me. Hey. Nice. All right, let's put the book back. Boom. <laughs> it doesn't fit there at all. What did you do? I was just... Rearranging the books. Missing book? Well, come on, let's check it out. Put it back. Yes, ma'am. We finally get to be like together? I think I'm beginning to understand. Dr. Gray is dealing with some kind of mass delusion. Or he's also a part of it. Whoa, that was crazy. And there's like a room back here. This is cool. It's like uh, old timey games. Old timey. I say old timey, but like 90s games. Like this is, the this is how the camera angles originally used to be. Huh. Has that been there this whole time? Furniture key. Oh. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, come on. No. Get me out. There we go. <laughs> what were you saying about mass delusion? Dorsetto seems to have a deranging effect on people living close by. It has a history of creating cults devoted to some nature goddess. Even the name Dorsetto refers to the cult existing here before the Civil War. We read about Dorsetto that. was the name of an ancient fertility goddess worshipped in Syria. Dr. Gray and his friends, however, seem to prefer... The black goat of the woods with a thousand young, or Shubnigroth. Nigroth. And that name can only have come from my uncle's twisted mind. <laughs> he came up with Shubnigroth. Interesting. You think all of them are in this cult business? Even Jeremy? I'm not sure any of them have a choice at this point. We just need to find a way to stop all of this. Valid. I've 
been so busy trying to free your uncle from the promise he made to the Dark Man. I guess I kind of just let everything else go. Don't worry, Detective. I feel like we're close. I'm sure Jeremy will turn up. If he is part of the cult, he wouldn't want to miss the Feast of St. John. I just need enough information to make him see the truth. I hope you're right, but I doubt he'll show up. Not as long as the Dark Man's got him hiding. Both right, I think. Is that all the conversation points? Yeah. Ooh. Good to finally meet you, Mr. Hartwood. I'm here on the behalf of your brother, Philip. You were expecting me, weren't you? Yes. You're from the Seattle, no? That's right. I just wanted to ask you a few questions to see if there is anything I can do to help you and your family. Okay. I understand you're full of imagination. You make up a lot of things. I suppose. And you obsess over them, blurring reality and fiction. Sometimes. Do you want to tell me about the Dark Man? No. No, I, I don't. That's all right. Perhaps there is something else you can tell me. Something you know to be made up, but you hold dear. Juan? John? Who's John? No. Juan Luis Jorge. Oh, wait there a moment. Here, take a look. Is he... Oh, he is the author. Page two? It's a magnificent book. Life-changing, even. The real Juan is long dead, but I like to think of him as my, my friend. Hmm. My most beloved friend. I see. Do you often do this? Fantasize about people you read about? No. No. Well, there is Jacob. Who is Jacob? Turn to the last page. Oh, it's a newspaper article. The Prisoner of Ice, Jacob Van Ostart. Is he also your beloved friend? Oh, no, Doctor. Not at all. He is the fire that fights fire. Yes, I think it's clear your overstimulated imagination, this mania, needs to be tempered for you to live a normal life. I know your family calls it the Hartwood Curse, but I want you to know that there is nothing supernatural about your condition. It's all inside your head. And with that, I'm very qualified to deal with. In time, you will be cured. In time, in time. Yes, in time we will exercise all your demons, all the dark men. Yeah! Please, Mr. Hartwood, calm yourself. What happened? Oh, don't you worry your little head about it, Miss Hartwood. Your uncle and I just had our first breakthrough. The dark men, dark men. It scared him, I think. Hmm. That's really interesting. So is the sigil that mark on, the on the floor. floor looks like talisman positions, but from which direction should I look at it? Huh. Furniture. I did absolutely nothing. The Snake Dagger, a monograph by Yael Klein. More history. In Ludwig Prinz's book on pagan rituals called The Mystery of the Grave, as translated by Nicholas Vahi, there are several references to a sacrificial dagger called the Snake Dagger. We have it! It has long been thought of as a poor translation of the original text. That it would be more appropriate with Worm Dagger from the Latin Vermis Cultrum. Worm this Dagger! This seems natural following the recent consensus that the original title of Prince book, The Vermis Mysteris, should literally translate to the Mystery of the Worm. However, this would take away from Vahi's great effort at translating the underlying meaning of the words and revealing several cultural beliefs. While Prin certainly was using the term worm as a symbol or synecdoche for death and the dead, which is made clear by the contents of the book, in the case of the dagger, we shouldn't be too hasty to dismiss his translation. Reading through Vahi's correspondence with his patron, it appears that he had more than just the Latin text at his disposal. 
Vahi had dug up Prin's living relatives and uncovered several cross-referenced historical texts and an actual snake dagger. The dagger was dated to the early Middle Kingdom of Egypt and had such a clear shape of a wave that Vahi considered calling it the sinusoidal blade. Knowing the full story, it seems prudent that he chose to translate it as snake and not worm. There are several reasons why this choice of word helps us understand the pagans that Prin's book attempts to describe. Okay, before we go to the next page though, this is interesting because if it is supposed to be the worm dagger, Jeremy described his darkness that's in his mind, the way he saw it in the x-rays of his brain, like a worm. Like a worm with darkness, like eating his brain, right? So if it is a worm dagger and it is meant to break the pact with Jeremy, it would make sense that it would be a worm dagger, right? It stabs the worm of darkness in his mind, right? I wonder if Dr. Gray is good if he was looking for the dagger to use that as a lobotomy tool. But that's kind of assuming a lot of things there. If we don't assume those things, anyway, going back to just the dagger in itself, um... And the, the meaning of the worm, and the worm is a symbol or a synecdoche for death, it would make sense because Jeremy said he killed himself and he was supposed to die, but he didn't. And maybe that's part of the pact that he made with the dark man. But the fact that the worm is there in his brain, it appears as a worm to him, and is a symbol for death means he's a dead man walking, right? Or supposed to be. So I think that's all interesting and connected that way, so... We're, this, is, this is fascinating. All right, next page. The symbolic value of the shape becomes more apparent when reading about the use for the dagger. In the passage of possession and exorcism, we find the snake dagger poisons the poisoner within the victim and is therefore pacified. Where the literal text would tell us that the worm dagger trumps the demon possessing the victim, it tells us nothing of their reasoning, only that somehow this dagger wins against the demon, like it had the better hand in poker. Vahi's translation allows us to follow the underlying logic to the ritual magic that is being performed. Poison the poisoner. Sounds like fighting fire with fire. Jacob? That to hurt the demon possessing its victim, the priests would have to fight back with a power that is known to the evil they are fighting. The snake dagger is therefore not only a good way to describe its form, but it also helps us understand how it could be thought of as a useful tool for exorcism. Finally, it also helps us understand their relationship to lunacy that it was thought of as something poisoning the mind, rather than controlling it. What is also interesting to note is that the possessed are always considered poisoned in their head, and not their heart. The snake dagger always went to the eye of the possessed, leaving them partially blind, if they had the good luck to survive. The lobotomy, the special type of lobotomy, this is the tool that they needed because it goes through the eye and it poisons the poisoner. It poisons, it gets to the point in his brain that is dark, right? The worm. And it would poison the poison, which is the worm. Oh, I connected the pieces. There we go. That's sick. Answer the phone. Where is the phone? Where's the phone? Out this way on his desk? Yep. Why would we want to answer his phone? Is it the tree calling? Hello? It, it, it can't be. Who is this? Jeremy? Yeah. Jeremy is with the dark man. You can't save him. Well, I've done everything you wanted so far, and there's just one more thing on the list. I expect him to keep his promise and return Jeremy unharmed. Get out, detective. While you still can. Definitely sounds like a man possessed. It's Jeremy's voice, but obviously not Jeremy. Carnby's so calm. 
trying to be so calm. What the fuck? <gasps> oh! But we need the number. What is the number? It's gotta be something with this thing on the floor, no? Detective Khan be wanted nothing more than to make sense of it all. But clearly, that was not in the cards right now. <laughs> not very helpful, but that's funny. He said it was about staring at the right angle. <laughs> hmm. Are you just gonna chill here? Okay. So we need to match the floor. I got a picture of it, so... It's like that. I think like that. And then this is down. A. The trunk, so it's in the bedroom. Yeah, I needed the reference picture. I was trying to do it from memory, and I was like, nope. You okay? You look a little frazzled. Just stupid telephone. I know. I tried calling the police earlier. The telephone is completely dead. It's not... Yeah, no, the telephone isn't working. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm gonna head off to Narnia. Detective Combe was worried Emily could tell that she could see the madness written on his face But what if he was the only one seeing the truth? Could that still be the case if only he could find evidence that would make her understand that he had seen beyond the veil or at least something that would show her he was worth the money she was paying him no <laughs> That's what he cares about. Miss Hartwood, I think you're gonna want to see this. She's not gonna be able to see is it. Is there I something think. in the closet? Yeah, there is. You don't see the very obvious gate leading to whatever Jeremy's madness is serving up next? I don't understand. Are you making some kind of fashion metaphor? I'm sorry, I don't have time for this. Can you just tell me what you're doing? You don't see this. It's fine. It's fine. Catch you later. Are you going inside the closet? Yeah. You got a problem with that? <laughs> no. Do what you think is right, detective. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Goodbye, Miss Harwood. It's so interesting. So she can't see it at all. But she doesn't notice that he like keeps like disappearing and reappearing. Ooh. We are in Narnia. It started out with snow. Oh shit. Sounds like a ship. Like the creaking and stuff. Is it a ship? I think it's a ship. Is it the same riverboat but like frozen over now? I'm sure that's laid out to be like a noose. Oh boy. What does it say? The fucking Steam Achievement says enter hell. What? An ice pick. Uh, now I got it back. What is that? A flare gun? <gasps> Use the flare gun to light up the sky and look for waypoint flags. Light your way forward. Oh shit. That's not gonna be good. Hey, we got the last one! Prisoner of Ice! Forbidden Knowledge. What can be said about Jacob van Ostat without evoking contempt or apologia? The first piece of information is the obvious. He is not the explorer Jeremy idolized in his youth, but the figment of his imagination. If you want biographical facts, I am not the one to answer such questions. In the case of Jeremy, he is a guardian of imagination. 
or rather a persona appointed the role of containing a self-sabotaging mania. However useful Jacob once was, his loyalty to Yermi has slowly been replaced by fanaticism. Like a firekeeper who has for decades been burnt by his own sacred flames, now does what he imagines the fire wants. Yermi has lost all control over Jacob and suffers greatly because of him, but is admittedly also still invigorated by his labor. In the plainest of words, Jacob keeps Yermi sick so he can remain Yermi. Jacob keeps Jeremy sick so he can remain Jeremy. Oh, so Jeremy must be his alternate now. Could that be who the Pale Man is? Or the Pale Man, the Dark Man? We found the ancient Stellarium perched on a cliff facing the Arctic Ocean after a day of sailing due north of the Eskimo encampment. Jacob van Ostadt was our most keen member of the expedition. He had been chasing down the source of a peculiar type of crystallized metal present in several sacred items among the natives on the northeast coast of Greenland. The site was a remarkable find for any explorer, and we were all enraptured in our search for enlightenment and meaning. The surviving architecture seemed almost unearthly in origin and astonishingly sophisticated. The metal Jacob was searching for was abundant, almost ubiquitous. We were so taken by our find that we were surprised by the sun falling below the horizon. As we quickly picked up our gear, ready to head back to our camp, Jacob von Ostadt declared that he wanted to stay. He was adamant. We begged him to reconsider. The night would be getting colder by the hour, and we feared for all our safety. Jacob refused, threatening us with violence if we wouldn't leave him alone. As the snowfall turned heavier, we left him there on his own. The next day the weather became worse, and we had to spend hours enforcing our shelter as our tents became increasingly useless. The group had written off Jacob, thinking he must be dead. I had an urge to make one final attempt to save him, so I headed out as darkness fell with a handful of flares and headed toward the coast and up the climb towards the Stellarium. That's when I saw him transfixed by a burning sky, that celestial lantern. Jacob keeled over and let out a painful shriek that struck me with such fear and pity. He was crying in agony, for the cold weather had ravaged his flesh. I called out to him, and he turned to face me. His vacant stare held me in place like a needle through a butterfly, and he said, You must leave now, Ashton. Go, and never come back. And so I left. Damn, and you condemned him to whatever was hurting him that's interesting but Juan said that he is probably he was never an explorer so in a way that account is kind of a lie no ah here's a waypoint guess our way in a direction go 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 there it is there it is I assume they're gonna be alternating Maybe not, because there's a wall here, kind of. You can vaguely see it. So maybe more like this way. Oh, I, s I think I see it. Yeah, I see it.
Nice. We're lighting the beacons, although they're disappearing behind me. Oh, shit. We found it. That doesn't look good. It's the Aurora Borealis. But the ominous green glow up here doesn't look safe, and neither does that whatever that is. This is really fascinating though. Really cool. Could use all the bullets I could get. What is that? What kind of portal to hell is that? We got the Stargate. It's a little broken. Uh, he can't go any faster than this. We're just climbing the... It's because we're, I think, freezing over. You can see our screens like glass almost. Oh boy. They're loading us up with a whole bunch of shit, by the way. Like we're headed for a boss battle. Is that Jacob? We're gonna use all the help we can get. Are we gonna have to fight whoever this is? Hey, you! Looks what like... are you doing here? What is this place? Turn back, detective. You're not. Oh, it's the oh take it easy. I'm not your enemy. Oh, you're wrong, detective. You're wrong. It is Jacob. Where did he go? What the heck? Does that do anything to him? <laughs> I don't think it does. That's funny, though. Oh, yeah, it's a boss battle, baby. What is that? pick too. Ugh. So if we kill the kill Jacob, maybe that would rate Jeremy. Align the stars. What the heck? Oh boy. Okay, I got. Oh. Of course, the Taurus. I figured you wouldn't want your stars aligned, Jeremy. Or Maybe that is what you need to temper that mania of yours. How do I switch this? Oh, there we go. There we go. Look, can I get the bottom disc? Nope, no, 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 no. Go put that back. Like, Taurus looks like a K, kind of. We did it. It's my symbol right there. Ooh, there it is.
we got the dagger. Yeah, bitch. Holy crap. <laughs> That's not gonna do shit. Good, there's a big hit. All right, run. Go, go, go. Shit. Yeah, you stay back, you elder horror. Oh, yeah, one more try. Jacob is Jeremy, right? I did everything! Aren't you happy? Stupid charlatan. What more do you want from me? You want me to lose my mind? Oh, my lord! Doctor! Baptiste! Quick! Jesus. What are you thinking, compadre? Is like a Shutter Island thing, I think. Oh shit! Oh my god! You awake? You are awake. Mr. Conby's up. Hey, buddy. I thought you'd be knocked out for the rest of the night. <laughs> Come on out and join us, will you? I'll save you some gumbo. Good Saint, to have you back. St. John. You gave us all a good scare. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Sorry for manhandling you, but you are being violent. You stabbed Jeremy and then punched Dr. Gray. Are they okay? Jeremy's a little strange, but everything's back to normal. Really? All thanks to you, combat. You want to try standing up? They're <laughs> covered in blood. This is freaky weird. Well, if it isn't the hero of the day. How are you feeling, detective? Never better. How about you two? Hey, Jeremy, I didn't do too much damage, did I? He's Things not... are fine. Very quiet. What's up with him? Painkillers? Lobotomy. No. You see, despite you having the finesse of a one-eyed butcher, you managed to lobotomize, dear Jeremy. I did what? It's actually quite impressive. It's not like I hadn't considered it myself. I just wish Jeremy could have 
been helped without reducing his personality to that of an oyster. But he's gonna live. Yeah, he's... Of course. As long as someone keeps feeding him, he'll outlive the best of us. <laughs> he got so fucked. <laughs> I mean, that's what needed to happen, right? So we, we broke the pact with the Dark Man. But the Dark Man was Jeremy's inner consciousness, his darkness. So that's kind of what we originally had thought. And then we got sucked into the madness of thinking it might have been real. And they're trying to say that it was a facade put on by Dr. Gray in the dark man garb. And there's something odd about that. Like nobody, and it seems like everybody was in on it, but there's something missing here. Like the, 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 the real magic that was happening, being able to like bounce between these different worlds and different memories, that's something, that's real because we can see the physical toll that it's taking on Carnby. Hmm. I still think there's something to the Darceto house and this tree because while Jeremy is super dark and he has the curse of the Heartwood family and he's really susceptible to deep imagining and very deep depression and darkness, I think there's something else. There has to be something more to it than that. Um, he mentioned his suicide attempt that he survived that could have been a medical he survived or it could have been that he made a patch not to die in that moment which is what caused more of this we i think we're safe to say that we got rid of jeremy's inner demons like his own personal demons through jacob right that character that became his alternate that became taking over his mind but i don't think we vanquished the outer darkness yet that has to do with tercero and the rest of the the stuff here and I think that Jeremy was able to see it because of his own madness. Something like that. Let's talk to these two. Does Emily know about Jeremy's condition? Yes. She seems to be handling it quite well under the circumstances. Does she still want to take Jeremy away from Dorsetto? I will have to insist that you do. This is not that kind of institution. It's fair. Jeremy, hang on for a little longer, okay? We'll be going back to New Orleans soon. Oh, good. I do so miss the city lights. At least he can converse, so that's pretty good. He didn't completely fuck his entire thing up. Is that all I can do with you two? Everything's all decorated for the St. John festivities. Oh boy. Okay. What does what our narrator lady say? Case closed. Detective Convy had found Jeremy and brought him back to Dercetto. He worried that Emily wouldn't be all that happy with his performance, considering Jeremy's impromptu brain surgery. Maybe she would refuse to pay him in full. It was the kind of thought that would normally infuriate Conby, but right now he just felt happy to be back. No matter if he would be seeing the $150 or not, he couldn't wait to rendezvous with Emily and go back to New Orleans. <laughs> Case closed. That's kind of interesting, though. I feel like it's the end end. Should we keep going? Oh, there's, there's Ruth hanging out. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you can't leave that easy. Alright, we'll continue. Let's see what's going on. Hi. Ew, she's got the ugly ass mask. Hey, Ruth. Glad to see you made it back to Dorsetto. You too, detective. Make sure to stay for the festivities. It's no Mardi Gras, but it ain't bad. All right. You seen Emily around? 
I saw her packing some things into that old jalopy you arrived in about an hour ago. I'm sure she hasn't given up on you yet. All right. Catch you later. <laughs> Looking forward to it, detective. <laughs> all righty. I guess that's all we can talk to her. So I guess we can just kind of go see everybody. Oh, see some gumbo. Yum. Hi, Mrs. Thompson. Sorry I forgot about you. Good to see you back on your feet, detective. Have some gumbo. Thanks. I'll save it for later. We are not on this woman's good side. <laughs> Seems like everyone's in a pretty good mood. The Eve of St. John is the most important date of the whole year. It's the only day when the black goat of the woods tends to her young. Hmm. I'm gonna go look for Emily. Don't worry about her. She wouldn't leave without you, would she? Let's hope not. What are you looking for? Just keeping an eye out for the storm. Radio says it could be a wild one. You don't know where Emily is, do you? <laughs> we keep asking everybody. She's packing some of Jeremy's things. Said she wanted to take him away. I'm sure she'll come and get you when she's ready. I mean, he's in here, so it's not like she's not going to come and get him. He can't go places, I don't imagine, by himself. I should probably get a move on then. He's going to be around, compare. super docile, but not very active. Kind of feels like we're saying goodbye to everybody. Alright, tell me, what the hell's about to happen here? Every year we have a little turn-the-page ceremony by the tree. It's symbolical. Symbol... It's like life has its cycles of grief and happiness. You know, just like a tree facing the seasons. Things change, but remain the same. Interesting. So this is basically New Year's Eve, but with a tree metaphor. <laughs> exactly. You're so smart. It's about starting again. I mean, who could use a positive message like that and more than a bunch of lunatics like us? His bottle is empty. I get the feeling some of you think this year is going to be special. Any idea why? He did mention that. Well, we got some new words, thanks to your buddy Jeremy, and some other changes to the program. Let's just say, we're all in this year. It better not be, yeah, yeah, or any of that shit, alright? Uh, I guess that's all we can talk to him. Hello. That is one impressive tree. More impressive than you could ever imagine. You should try me. After all the shit that we've seen. So how does this all work? You dance around chanting? For the ritual, I mean? Stay and find out, detective. It might just do you good. Oh, we'll get sucked into the tree. This shit's gonna get real. We you never got seen the... seen Emily, have you? No, detective. I haven't. It's fair. We didn't get the trees calling yet, so I'm sure that's gonna come get us. What is this? Wait for Mrs. Hartwood. Oh. I guess we just have to wait. Oh, there's Grace. Hey, kid. What are you up to? Preparing for the ceremony. I don't want to disappoint Mother. What's your part in this? I'm the Cabri San Corn. It's very important. Only I can settle our debt. You know, I had my doubts, 
But you are in the right place, Grace. <laughs> I think you might be right. For once. That could be taken super rude, by the way. I think you are crazy. <laughs> I don't think that's the way he means it, but it's kind of the way that it could come across. What did we offer to the tree in... We don't have that objective anymore. So we didn't... Whatever happened with the tree, we never got it. I guess we wait. Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Oh god. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Oh boy. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, we need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. Uh, this does, he seems like the only one of reason at this point. I mean, you're outnumbered, buddy. Just say no if you're that scared of it. They Hell, there are praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Hear us, mother, and take pity on us. Hear us, mother, and take pity on us. Take pity on us. I had a feeling. Stop! Are you crazy? This is just the least that happened, Cosby. Grace, stop! Stop! Detective, get my uncle out of here. Yeah, bitch! Yeah. Jeremy, come with me! Get over here! Oh my god, everybody! Jeremy, come with me. Jeremy, come here! No! There has to be another one! Please, no! They're gonna take everybody. Everybody. Monster leave Dorsetto. I have to stop it. Oh my fuck! Oh, I had a bad feeling they were gonna like sacrifice Grace or something. It was coming off as cult like, but never did I think the fucking tree would get up and fucking eat people. Oh my god. Jesus. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. We need those things. Oh fuck, Did I, am I stuck? I'm stuck. Well, too late. Oh my god. How do we even? I'll pull up on everything, that's good. Smokes. Debris. Oh my god. 
Oh yeah. That Shub Niggeroth is if I've ever seen him. Holy shit. Alright, how do we destroy you? I imagine in the mouth, yeah?
so close! Ah! Oh, fuck! everything. Detective. Oh, what the hell was that? I try to tell you. There was so much evidence. Their devotion to the black boat was like nothing I've ever seen before. I felt so dumb believing any of it, but I'm glad I did. Are you okay? <laughs> you fine. Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Yeah. Well, you're welcome, buddy. Oh, Grace. Look at our happy fam. How are you doing, sweetie? I kind of like it. You ruined everything, but I'm not mad. <laughs> well, that was a hell of an ending. We saved all the characters, I guess, worth saving? All right, you ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. We're leaving. Oh my god. Can I come? I thought you said you didn't need saving. Damn, dude. Don't leave her. She's important. Of course we're taking her with us. You just leave her in the rotting mansion that's on fire. 
<laughs> I know he's joking. I know he's joking. <laughs> but I don't know if like this is the time to joke. We just burnt down the mansion and massacred the entire fucking everybody. Holy smokes. I mean, it wasn't a bad ending, but damn. <laughs> Could we have saved other people? Could we have saved everybody? I mean, they definitely got, like, indoctrinated into the cult. Holy smokes. Wow. Well done, Pieces Interactive and THQ Nordic. Oh. Oh my god. That last battle at the end there, like, it wasn't, like, hard to figure out what to do. It was just, like, and when you took that thing down, sometimes if you took it down in the wrong spot, you couldn't get around it. So, like... You wouldn't be able to get to like all of the things fast enough um and then in the end i think my best strategy was throwing molotovs at the entryway of where those things were coming out of if you could get to it um and it saved a lot of damage because you could take most of them out and then they would only take maybe one or two bullets if anything i tried not to focus on them as much and you could kind of get in a rhythm of running around the thing and running away from them but when it came to the end, where you really had to just kind of stand and shoot the thing, and it's all of its, like, pus things, those bubble things, uh, ulcer things, um, that's when it really started to get you. But um, you get into a rhythm of it really easily. The game kind of plays overall like a, I want to say like a 2015, 2016 game. Like it reminds me a lot of like old like Xbox 360 games like um, like Murdered Soul Suspect or something like that. I don't know, just the way in that the controls work. I had a couple of glitches, like the sound would glitch out at some point. You guys saw that the subtitles were a little fucked up at the end there. Uh, and then I, I kept personally just getting stuck on everything. Like my feet would get like caught on something and then sometimes I could get unstuck and then other times I had to like literally reload um, my autosave or whatever. But other than that, I mean just like very minor like glitches and things like that, but it really didn't disturb the game overall for me. Um, overall, everything was fantastic. I mean, the amount of detail that they put into all of the voice acting was incredible. Um, the story was easy to follow, but it was really well done. And I really felt like I was in the shoes of Edward Carnby. I really felt like I got to like experience his detective skills because each thing literally led you to the next thing. And that felt good to experience. And um, there was something really fun about being able to kind of piece everything together and go okay we got this clue now to this room now to this room now to this room and i think we unlocked a lot of the lagnaps um we found a good couple of e extra secret bits and um we did i think pretty much everything outstanding except for the medicine cabinet and then i think the puzzle in um jeremy's girlfriend's room uh, I think that one was stuck because I technically didn't solve it to get the box, the lock. So I think that one was kind of stuck there. But I know I missed, um, I think there was another, like, maybe safe or something that I missed. But I think overall we did pretty good. I found all the items that I could. We unlocked a lot of extra story and I think that really helped put things together. Um, it's very interesting, like, the way that it sort of, like takes you in and makes you question what's going on it does a really good job of setting up madness and it does a really good job of like pulling you in because you kind of start to lose control the way that Carnby loses control in the story like you keep trying to go okay maybe it's you know this madness maybe it's this dark depression maybe it's this whole facade that's going on maybe there's an outside element and there definitely is like their seto is messed up but the the dark man and things like that is, you know, the, the illusions that it's Jeremy's mind that's eating at him. Um, and as Edward kind of falls down the rabbit hole, Mr. Carnby, um, you end up kind of falling down the rabbit hole with him and going in and out of all these things, things like all these worlds, these memories and stuff. And then he starts to question like where he was. And he questions his own memory because he forgot about Grace. And learning, you know, he's like, you seem really, really familiar. Um, learning that he himself is also running from that guilt um, is really, um, you know, interesting. We love the Doom Jazz, so I just had to say that as I looked at the, the scroll there. Um, amazing job. Everybody, thank you so much for you, the people that worked on this game. You did a fantastic job. The voice acting was amazing. 
Um, the sights were amazing. The beautiful environments were incredible. Um, really, really well done all the way around. Um, and the story was just so interesting, like all the way through. It's exactly everything I love. It's detective, you know, it's mystery. It's got that Lovecraftian kind of alien horror to it. Um, this overwhelming existential dread that Jeremy feels, you know, you can kind of see why in the end there. It indoctrinated everybody. And it was really wild to see everybody absolutely just completely turn. I was getting the feeling at the end when they were all super happy for the St. John's thing. And my mind was in two places. My mind was in like, okay, it's the end. Maybe St. John's is like this innocent, like dinner, happy thing because everything else is so fucked up and dark. Maybe we just assume that it is fucked up and dark. Or it was gonna be like a big finale that was gonna be super horrible. And um, yeah, definitely the latter. <laughs> uh, when everybody was like, oh, we wanna use this new chant. I was like, oh no, no, no. And even the doctor's like hesitant for it tells you that like he was the last holdout for trying to not go mad, but he was already kind of mad because he didn't do anything to stop them. Like he could have tried to have a little bit better control over them and tried to like stop some stuff. But I mean, there's so many of them and then they just started chanting. And then once the words are out there, I mean, it's probably hard to not let the tree damn hear that. You know what I mean? Um, but it was really wild. That ending there was crazy. Um, that was crazy. And like Dr. Gray wasn't like bad, but his methods of trying to help his patients are really odd. Um, but he doesn't seem like off his rocker bad. Like he's not like Dr. and Outlast bad, but like he's definitely not like helpful. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the sound here, but maybe I'll change it to the jazz because it's kind of it's weird it's like the rain soundtrack but it's like distorted you guys don't need to hear that i'll fix the the music um but really interesting i'm very curious more than anything to kind of figure out um what emily was up to this whole time because she doesn't seem to be able to uh see any of that stuff Ooh, there we go end credits so to build off that thought really quickly, um, I'll be really curious to see what Emily Hartwood's playthrough is like because she doesn't seem to be encountering anything of this darkness. She seems to be firmly within the world of Derceto and the madness and the Lovecraftian horrors that are happening there. So maybe she witnesses kind of more what's happening to the patients, the death of um, Perosi and the death of... Cassandra, her suicide. Maybe find out a little bit more about what's going on with Mrs. Thompson, with Grace, probably. I definitely think that we're gonna be kind of set more around the Derceto mansion and kind of uncovering the odd darkness, the cult that's really in there. They're connected and not connected because you could say that like Jeremy's darkness is his own thing and it has nothing really to do with the the Shub Negroth uh, monster. Um, you could say that he is recognizes it because he has a similar darkness in him, but you could almost argue that Edward's story is about curing Jeremy, um, and maybe Emily's story obviously remains to be seen, I don't know, but could be about curing the Lovecraftian darkness, and then uh, obviously Edward Carnby has to deal with it because he's the he's got the gun and the weapons and stuff. But I do wonder if we have some a similar ending with Emily, I wonder if she's able to fight in her own way she did have a gun so that was something at the end there and she was able to throw that molotov so that kind of came out of nowhere for me so it'll be really curious to kind of see what tools that she gets to play with um and she's got that portrait so i wonder if instead of the talismans she uses the portrait to access things around the mansion or something like that. Uh, I'll really be interested to see what it is, and we are gonna play that because we got it at this point. Edward Carnby's story is clearly only half of the story here, and it's a good chunk of it. I mean, we, we, we figured out a lot. I think we really got a very clear um, breakdown of what the story was and what was going on, so I'll be very um, willing to see what the other half of it is, if it changes any of the meanings that we've learned so far with Edward Carnby, 
or if it's the same but we get more detail and more backstory to what's going on probably in the Desardo mansion. I loved it. I loved it all the way. I love the doom jazz. I love the fire. I love the noir aspect of it. Some of you were commenting like if you just put it in black and white, I mean they really nailed the noir films. I mean definitely Maltese Falcon and Humphrey Bogart, all of his, you know, his films and um, Lauren Bacall, you know, that, that era of filmmaking was really, really well done. I love revisiting it, you know, they, they take the essence of those things and they combine it with a couple of modern elements for gaming and it really works all the way around as a game. It's fun, it's, I, would, I wouldn't even say it's like short and sweet, it's really well put together in length. I think my only complaint as far as the pacing goes is that some of the chapters were really long, like the first chapter was short, the second chapter was super long, the third chapter was really short, and then the fourth chapter was super long again, and then the fifth chapter was like kind of short. Um, it was really just that like boss battle and then kind of you're out and over. All the way around, just super awesome. So with that, um, I will absolutely be visiting Miss Emily Hartwood's story. I wonder if there's any other, other endings as well. I, I'll be very curious to kind of see if that's a good ending? I mean, it was kind of a good ending. Like I said, you saved all the pertinent characters. Um, the characters that we were supposed to grow to care about. But I do wonder if there's a world in which you could save all of the Desetto Mansion. And that you don't set everything on fire. Uh, maybe just the tree or something, or like everybody gets to escape like until dawn or something at the end, even though the mansion burns down, if that has to happen. They obviously seem indoctrinated into the madness, so there's definitely something to be said that they weren't good in the end, um, but they definitely seem like victims of the madness and the darkness and of Shub Nigroth. And I think Jeremy maybe exacerbated that with his own darkness leaking out in his memories and things like that, the way that he was messing with that kind of ancient magic in a way. Anyways. I hope you guys are loving this series. I hope you guys enjoyed Mr. Edward Carnby's story. If you guys want to check out Emily's story, it will be right over here. And um, yeah, give the channel a like and subscribe if you're interested for more content like this. I do a lot of cool series and stuff. It's going to be pretty awesome. I'm ready to continue the mystery if you guys are. So we'll don the fedora once again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay spooky, guys. Enjoy the jazz, and have a good night.